Well, these days, the term paparazzi conjures up images of ruthless photographers harassing celebrities. But there was a gentler time when press photographers actually got to know their subjects. And one of the best of them in South Australia was Vic Grimmett. And after almost 50 years and thousands of snaps, he's put out a collection of his favourites. Mike Sexton reports. One, two, three, five! Lovely guys, really lovely guys. Couldn't be nicer. There was no snobbery about them. They did everything you wanted to do. They answered all their questions with humour. It was really great. Yeah, great fun. In 1964, the Beatles were the hottest ticket in Adelaide. And among the paparazzi, such as it was, jostling for the perfect shot was Vic Grimmett. I'm standing there and Harrison walks over to me. He says, Vic? And I said, how does he know my name, Vic? Then I realised he'd read off my press pass. And he said, couldn't you give me a roll of 35 mil, could you? I haven't got any. I said, yeah, yeah, right, so I've in a bag of them. I said, I'll give you a couple more later. Vic Grimmett had been sent by the Women's Weekly to get a different shot of the Fab Four for its cover. After giving a roll of film to George Harrison, he asked if the Beatles would pose for a special shot just for him, and they agreed. I organised this picture of the, like the barbershop quartet, and I'm just about to take it, and this photographer rushes up. So I said, hey, come on now, come on, you've, 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 this is my shot. And Lennon turned and said, yeah, give him a go, it's his, it's his shot, you've had your turn. No, and he's, it's quite funny, so he backed me up. <laughs> the portrait made the cover of the weekly and was one of thousands of pictures Vic Grimmett snapped during a half century as one of Adelaide's leading photographers. And it's fitting that he took photographs of the fabulous and the famous because his interest in photography was inspired by a celebrity, his own father, the legendary test leg spinner, Clary Grimmett. He was mad on photography. He had several ordinary cameras, plus he had movie cameras. And when he went overseas, he used the movie camera to take the pictures of the cricket and places he visited. For Clary Grimmett, what went on tour came home from tour, including a tiny camera that would change the course of his son's life. Yes, my father brought it back when he went to England in 1934. It's called an Enzyme Midget. It's a folding camera, and you just unfold the camera. But the beauty of it is, it slips, when it's folded back, it slips in your fob pocket on your trousers, and you wouldn't know any, no one to have your camera. And so I took it away with me to England, and I got some magnificent photographs with it. It's just so simple to operate. And you just look through the viewfinder, line it up, and away it goes. Marvellous little camera. With that tiny camera, Vic Grimmett took hundreds of photographs, including this one of the Lancaster bomber he flew during the war, on its belly after an emergency landing he'd just performed. But that's another story. After returning safely home, his big break came when he was caught taking pictures of Bullen Circus and was asked by the owners to photograph their forthcoming weddings. What I got for the, uh, all those photographs, paid for all my equipment and I had a few dollars, a few pounds in the bank, so I was off and running. There virtually wasn't a topic or subject he didn't photograph, and while some were straightforward, others required a certain discretion. I was taught photographing this well-known Adelaide gentleman, he was a knight actually, and um, he was out in his office in North Adelaide and he was sitting there in his beautiful office and I noticed his fly was open. Now I would not say to him, excuse me, I just said, look, let's put a book down, it looks better. So he held a book there and he took the photograph, it looked, even looked better with a book. And of course when he finished he noticed it, he noticed it. So then he sort of said, oh, I didn't notice the book must have covered it. He wasn't embarrassed, we just had a good laugh. <laughs> a few years ago Vic Grimmett put his camera away and his feet up but he kept every negative he ever shot. And when a local publisher approached him, he jumped at the chance to put his photos and stories into print and called it Confessions of an Adelaide Flasher. And when it comes to modern flashes, things have changed a lot since the Beatles were in town. The digital technology makes the craft almost unrecognisable to Vic Grimmett, but he still can't help offering a word of advice to the whippersnappers. Today, these, these boys with the digital cameras, uh, God, and they're rapid fire. Oh, I just blew it. <laughs> totally different. I never took two shots, anything I ever took. Just two, two shots. If you don't get it in two, you'll never get it. Great stuff.